Hey everybody, um, I it's been a while since I've done a video, um, but uh, I just wanted to do a quick update on emulation for the new Raspberry Pi 5. I normally don't do these kinds of tech videos, but I am very curious about emulation in general. Um, I've been doing emulation for a very long time, and usually I do my emulation on a gaming laptop that I use. Um, it's, you know, mid-range. Mid I bought it in 2021, and it gets the job done. Um, it's a pretty good mid-level gaming laptop, I think, for what I paid. But uh, uh, And I, I understand that with single-board computers, there's all kinds of options, and a lot of people like to ask, a lot of techies like to ask, well, why on earth would you go with a Raspberry Pi when there's other better and more powerful single-board computers for the same price or slightly more expensive? And the reason is um, I just... I'm, I like the form factor. I like the price of the Raspberry Pi. I like kind of fiddling around with it, but I'm not an expert techie by any means. So um, when it comes to these single board computers, the only experience I really have with them are the, the past Raspberry Pis. Uh, I had a Raspberry Pi 4 that I, I liked, I enjoyed for the last few years, and I also had before that a Raspberry Pi 3B+. Um, so I, I enjoy them. I know they're not the most powerful machines. Um, I just like experimenting and seeing how far I can push it with emulation. Um, I know with the Raspberry Pi 4, um, pretty much like the 3, it did Dreamcast and N64 emulation better, but it still just wasn't quite there. For me, it wasn't a great experience emulating those systems. So I ordered my Raspberry Pi 5. I got mine actually off of off of Villrose.com. Um, I basically paid 150 for mine. That included the 8 gigabyte model. Um, it came with a metal case and a 32 gigabyte SD card and uh, um, a power supply, uh, the one they recommend for the Pi 5. Uh, for 150, I might have overpaid a little bit. I'm not sure, but um, I don't know how much that aluminum case is that I bought. But it's a specific Velrose case, as you can see uh, here. It's sorry, the videography isn't great, but uh, basically, I wanted to test some emulation on the Raspberry Pi 5 using the experimental build of Recall Box 9.2. Um, I've been checking the sites every day and I know it's still really early to check out emulation. I've checked out sites from like ETA Prime um, and I know that there have been tests with PS2 emulation using the uh, Raspberry Pi operating system. I don't really like using the desktop mode on the Raspberry Pi. I strictly use like RetroPie in the past, Recallbox. I've had really good luck with Botocera. Um, so I wanted to try some emulation with Recall Box, and primarily I've tested games that have been very hard to emulate in past iterations of the Pi. Um, so the first game I'm going to start with, for some reason I never really see a lot of people test this one out, is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, one of my personal favorite N64 games. Um, this is a weird one because it's not really a hard game to emulate, but depending on the emulator, you'll get different results each time. There are certain emulators that don't have all of the graphics in there for some reason. Um, and in the past, on the Raspberry Pi 4, Shadows of the Empire is very playable, but I get a lot of glitchy artifacts in the background. And it, as you can see here, I've got the frame counter up in the upper right-hand side. I don't know if you can see it, but um, it's basically running at full speed. It looks really good. There are some frame drops. I know this is a very experimental build, but I think once the developers get a hold of some more Pi 5s and they really start working on the drivers, I think this is going to look really good. It also it, it already looks much better on the Pi 5 than on the Pi 4. Um, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically uh, running at full speed. Once in a while, if I get really close to an object, um, it'll drop a couple of frames, but I don't really notice it that much. The frame counter never seems to drop below 60. As you can see here, this is the fourth phase of level one on a Hoth. And uh, even with all of these AT-ATs and AT-STs, um, the, it's still running at full speed with no problem. And uh, here, you, here we are in level two, uh, the first level where we play uh, third person with Dash Rundar. And as you can see, um, the, after the, right before the initial cutscene, it, it'll, it'll lag out a little bit. But after that, it seems to run very smoothly on the Pi 5. So not a problem, um, aside from those, frame, those few frame dips with cutscenes and things. Um, runs pretty good. Now, another one that um, has been a pain to run um, is Cruisin' USA on the N64, which is actually one of my favorite racing games on the system. Um, I know it's a very simple game, but for some reason, that one in particular seems to give the Raspberry Pi a hard time. 
Now, something that's interesting about these next few N64 games, because I got the same results in all of them. If you watch the footage right here at the beginning of the race, it looks unplayable, right? It looks really choppy. But uh, once we get about a minute, a minute and a half in, watch what happens. As you can see, it's cleaned up. So after about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes of gameplay, now it's running at full speed. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to finish this race, and I'm going to actually start the next race to show you that it's not a fluke. If you let it play for about a minute and a half, two minutes, it gets up to full speed. This is the best I've ever seen a Raspberry Pi emulate this game. Um, when I first got the Pi 5 and I started uh, trying out these games, I was actually a little disappointed because it seemed to run it worse than the Raspberry Pi 4. And I know that, again, it's very early and the developers really need to, to develop some of the drivers. I'm not an expert on all of that tech stuff, but um, just by hearing like ETA Prime talk about some of this stuff, um, I know it's in early stages, but once you get past that initial um, minute 30, it runs great. And it'll probably run like this because I ran it for a good probably five minutes on a couple of different tracks. Um, and it'll run like this for, you know, as far as I know, as, as long as you don't exit out of the game. Now, it's not loading shaders or caching shaders like what you would see on like the Wii U or the PS3 emulators. Every time you load the game in, it doesn't matter what level you're on, it seems to have this hiccup where for the first minute and a half, two minutes, it'll run kind of unplayable. You get past that, and all of a sudden, the, you know, the longer you run it, it'll actually get up to full speed, and it runs really smooth. The next game we're going to try is Goldeneye, and the same thing here. A lot of people who test this game, they I see them always test this level, the first level, and... It's running pretty bad right now. I wouldn't call this unplayable. Sometimes the frame rate drops down into the mid-30s. Um, but again, if you get towards kind of the end of this level where you actually get into the underground part with all the guards, look at how many guards are on screen. And it's running great. It's running at a constant 60. So I'm sure it's just a driver's update. But yeah, you get past like the first two minutes of this game and it runs great, no problems. I've actually played the second level where you get just tons of uh, the guards after you. And it runs really smoothly. But as you can tell from this gameplay, there's there's all of these guards on screen. And it's running at a constant 60 with maybe a couple of frame drops here and there. But I also know running it on the actual hardware on the N64, there were frame drops then too. So that could just be a product of the game or the emulator for all I know. These are all running on, I believe, Moopin64 Plus next. Uh, the default is, I believe, using the Rice plugin. I couldn't get any game to run using that. So Moopin64 Plus Next ran these games the way they are now. Now the next one that I know has been giving the Pi a lot of problems is Killer Instinct Gold. And believe it or not, again, um, it's got the same issue. You let it play for about a minute. When I get into the second round here, you're going to see though, it's going to pick up and play full speed. Again, um, after you get past that initial couple of minutes of playing it, for some reason it smooths out. And this is the best I've ever seen the Raspberry Pi uh, play any of these games. So um, it's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm sucking pretty hard here because I, ha I have the button. I haven't changed the button layouts yet. Um, I've got all of my C buttons mapped to my right thumbstick, which is, you know, on the N64, those, the, the, the C buttons were all of your uh, kicks and punches. So playing this with the thumbstick doing all of that is not easy. So I suck pretty hard here. But another game that I'm going to try out, and this one's in MAME, I actually am going to try out Killer Instinct, the arcade version on MAME. Um, now, keep in mind, I've tried different versions of this game. The only one I could get to run is you need the 2003 MAME ROM set. Um, and this is one of those games where you also need their own individual CHD files. Um, you need that. You need those from the 2003 ROM set as well. Um, it's a pretty small set in comparison to the newer sets. Um, I do have a pretty recent set that, um, for Killer Instinct at least, will not work. You also, if you're going to try to run Killer Instinct from my experience on here right now, the only emulator that will run it is MAME 2003. MAME 2003 Plus crashes. Um, it basically boots back into the operating system, into Recal Box. But here we go. I'm going to play Killer Instinct on MAME using MAME 2003. And as you can see, it's running great. It's a constant 60 full speed arcade emulation on the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, this is hands down the best I've seen it run. Now, I know that in past iterations of the Pi, there have been some workarounds to get Killer Instinct to run 
um, on the Raspberry Pi. I have seen it run in earlier iterations of the Pi using some kind of workarounds, but this is running in the actual uh, recall box operating system at full speed. And just to show you how good this is, I'm going to actually boot up Killer Instinct 2. Same thing, you need the 2003 ROM set, and it, it only runs on MAME 2003. But we're going to choose, uh, well, actually, we're going to do a random select here. But uh, we're going to go in and uh, check it out, and here it is. It's running at full speed. Um, and actually, in my opinion, this runs, this looks better than Killer Instinct Gold on the N64, and I don't have to map the controls. The controls are already mapped the way they should be on this controller, but it runs great. It looks pretty good. Um, a lot of these games I have tried to upscale to 1080p, and um, I've, I've gotten a lot of problems doing that, so I wouldn't recommend doing that just yet. Um, there, you know, it's it's been hit or miss if I try to um, upscale these games. But uh, for right now, yeah, this is the best performance I've seen out of the Raspberry Pi. So if you get your hands on a Raspberry Pi 5, I am also overclocked a little bit. Um, but if you played it straight out of the box, I don't think and I don't think you'd have to. Uh, I don't think you'd have to run an overclock to get this kind of performance. Maybe I'm not sure, but uh, as you can see, if you get past those first couple of minutes, these games run great. Um, I'm trying to think the only the only game I tried where it wasn't running full speed just yet was I did try God of War uh, Chains of Olympus on PSP and um, you're not going to be able to upscale that to 1080 to, to a 1080p or or even 2x resolution. Um, it does run better than I have seen it run on other pies before. It's still not quite at full speed yet. It's still kind of choppy. It's somewhat playable it's not bad but also on a 50 inch television um it doesn't look great when it's not upscaled so there's that i wouldn't necessarily run out and buy one of these for psp just yet but i think uh once maybe they get vulcan on here uh, they update the vulcan drivers or they incorporate vulcan whatever they have to do it'll probably run much more smoothly but uh that's all i've got i just wanted to do a quick video on this playthrough and let you uh know uh where it's at right now. I'm actually pretty impressed and pretty happy with it, and hopefully they keep de developing it in the future because uh, I'm a huge fan of the Raspberry Pis. I, I love using them for emulation, and I want to see uh, how far they can push this because it looks really promising.